Welcome to the Jamoti Podcast. We are all surrounded by amazing coaches and leaders. So let's get an inside look at not just what they do, but how they do what they do. After all, becoming the best versions of ourselves is Jamoti, just a matter of doing it. The Jamoti Podcast is powered by Sideline Interactive. Sideline Interactive is the leading manufacturer for high quality, innovative scoring tables and LED video display boards that help coaches and schools bring more excitement to fans, create huge fundraising opportunities, and make their jobs easier. Visit sidelineinteractive.com to check out their amazing products. I feel like I know a little bit about kind of the style of play that you want to go to, and and, but then also a little bit about your, your, your program and culture. But what are those standards and pillars? Because when I talk about culture, that that word's almost getting hard to say. Like it's such a buzzword, even though everybody has one and it is important. But I like to think of it more as standards and pillars. What are those of your program? Yeah, we really talk about three things here. You know, obviously, I'm I'm probably like every coach in America. You know, we have a different theme every year for, that we kind of draw attention to and kind of plug all year long. There's no doubt about it. I mean, last year's ours, our theme was motivated. You know, what are we motivated toward? And and this year, our theme is the word driven. And 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 so you know, under our theme every year, there are three consistent pillars of our program. The first thing is the catch word and it's culture. And I believe in culture. Um, I believe uh, when you have a bad culture, it can really train wreck your season, right? When, yeah. when kids aren't for each other, when the work ethic is not there, when, you know, whatever it is, I, I think culture is important. That's where kids learn. This is how we do things here. This is not how we do things here, right? This is how we go about our business and so forth. Um, and so the first pillar is our culture, and, and it's really what we call a brotherhood. You know, we try to get our guys to buy into the fact that we're for each other on and off the court. And that's really hard yeah. to do because, you know, they are a team, but they're competing against each other for play in time. That's right? the beautiful part and, of it. That, yeah. Yeah. And, and that's that's the that's the beautiful just friction that that lies within every team. Right. And so it's hard for me as I compete against this guy to be for this guy, you know, you know, because he's playing in front of me or he's playing behind me, whatever the case may be. But then, you know, teaching them to be for each other off the court as well. When something bad happens, man, what are you going to do? Are you going to be there for your brother? Are you going to go and lift them up? Are you going to go over to their dorm room and spend time with them and listen and talk it out? Are you going to do those kind of things together? And, and then when we're off the court, can we still be friends? You know, one of the things, you know, man, we used to talk a lot of trash on the court, right? And when we were players, you know, but one of the things about me, I could talk trash with the best of them when the game was over, no matter what happened on the court, it was over for me. And I was able to hang out with that guy I was talking trash with. We were able to go to Taco Bell, run to the border. And do you feel like your players that, can do that? Or is that something a little bit different now? Well, I think now it, it's a little bit harder um, because th- at least at our level, because they feel like this can make or break their career. You know what I mean? Um, and and like a senior versus a freshman. And yeah. If you're playing a freshman over a senior or whatever the case, it, it just brings a different dynamic, right? Um, but I think it's hard to teach, but that culture is so important. So we just, we resound the word brotherhood for our culture more than anything. And so we do a lot of things to build our culture. And those are the things that we do off the court from team church. We to the community service, to the fun times that we have going on retreats and going to, you know, play laser tag or going bowling or whatever it is, just trying to build the friendships. And so right now, you know, our focus, my coaching staff, we met this morning. I looked at them. I said, these next two months, all these two months are about is building relationships with our guys and, and allowing our guys to build relationships with each other. Hmm. That's what dictates your brotherhood in your culture. It's the relationships. That's the special sauce. That's the glue that keeps it together. And then the other part of Coach, our, before uh, you go to that one, yeah. before you go to the next one, I, I want your advice on this because what's unique about talking with you, not only have you literally been at this school, but you've been at the high school level and at this private school world that I'm in, you know, and then at the JUCO level. So you've just really, you've hit a lot of those different spots where like, I love the idea of August and September, this time of year. I don't care if you can work with your guys. Like we have, we have second period athletics. If you can work sure. with them or not, I feel like that should be the emphasis anyway. 
of building those relationships with between you and your players, between them. What do you think about like what's an appropriate amount of time and effort? Like what's doable as a high school coach where you know they they're going their full day of school, then they're going home to their where it, it is a little bit unique at, on a college campus where like schedules sometimes I'm not saying college schedules are easier, but I remember my college schedule and there were days where <laughs> man I got one or none, you know, it's a nice right, day. I'm going right. to go to the, I'm going to go to play sand volleyball pretty soon. And, you know, but That's you right. have that time and they're not going back home. Uh, what do you think for high school coaches? Like how much time can we dictate to that or give to, dick, not dictate, give to that, but then the balance of not overwhelming them also to where yeah. they don't have time for other things. What, what are your thoughts on that? I remember when I was the head coach at Prestonwood and we had a lot of pressure on us to win. Right. Julius, yep. the, when I went back as the head coach, I was there as an assistant. Then I went to faith. Now I went back as the head coach and Julius had just left and gone to Kentucky and got drafted by the Lakers. And, and the year I came back, they were like, Oh man, you, you know, these guys, they're not going to be very good. I had a bunch of sophomores and, you, you, you know, and I was just like, man, you know, we're going to have to figure this out. But the standard was still there for us, right, to still be that team. You know, yeah. Julius is gone and I've, now I've got to come in and pick up the pieces of that and figure out how to keep winning. And, you know, I had a parent. Uh, they gave me some great advice. And thankfully, I'm a pretty good listener. Um he pulled me aside one day and his son was a, one of those sophomores I had. And he said, coach, I know you because his son played for me when I was the assistant at Prestonwood, Zach Peters. But Tim came to me and he said, hey, remember, every season's a journey. And he said, don't get lost in trying to be like every other team that's been, been here. He said, you can be different. And I thought that was so uh, freeing wow. for me. Yeah. And he he, he told me, he said, have some fun with these guys. They're young. And, man, that was a good word for me, you know, because um, I was feeling the pressure, right, uh, to be continue winning state championships, you know, as the head coach now. And, and, uh, and man, that was good. And so, you know, about once a week, we did something together. And I think here's what I would say for a high school coach. You don't always have to go do something special where you're spending money to create yeah. these moments for these guys. But man, like we, we went out one Sunday and we did a, a cancer run and we're there serving the cancer run, did that together one morning. You know, it didn't cost us a dime to do that, to go be kind to people and to serve people. That was a togetherness thing. We went to church, you know. Uh, one week and we were together and we worshiped together. That was another thing we did. Yeah. We went and played laser tag, you know, one day and, and that was a day we were together, but we didn't do that like five times a week. That's once a week, finding a time when we're in the weight room, you know, and the time I did have with them was making sure that we did things together in the course of our lifting. And after our lifting that brought us together, learning about each other, being together, sharing each other's experiences. Um, man, I think more than anything, it's just finding those moments in the course of a week where you go, man, at least one time this week, I'm going to have a moment where we're beyond the court and we're beyond their personal improvement on the basketball court. But man, how can I provide a moment for my players and for my coaching staff and myself to where we're just building relationships with each other. And you can do that a number of ways through a number yeah. of things. And I, I think it's just got to be a priority early um, because the more that team loves each other, you know, this, and the more they love you and the more you love them, man, the better it's going to be when it gets tough and it's always going to get tough. Right. And I love the way that, I mean, there are going to be some of those scheduled moments, right. Where we're going to go play laser tag doing the run. But then I think maybe the, the, what the special sauce or what might uh, change or make some coaches kind of at another level is the awareness to see when those moments pop up right in front of you because you're right culture moments uh, but times where we can build up our teams pour into somebody those are there all the time but how right. often do we have our head down with the practice plan the skill we got to get through the amount of time left on the clock 
uh, things going off off the floor, the pressures of winning or losing, and we miss those moments. I think maybe that one percent or a big difference between good and great is having the awareness to see those moments when they come. Well, and not only that, I'll tell you one of the things we do a lot here, and it's not perfect. I mean, but it's something that works for us, you know, and uh, is that, you know, I'm big on listening and I'm big on asking questions. And so we'll get done with the weight session and I'll pull them together and I'll say, okay, Dar- Darius, our preseason All-American for this next year. I mean, he's going to be a pro. And I'll look at him and I'll say, hey, Kate, hey, Derry, I said, uh, what'd you see someone else in this weight room do today that you thought was good? Yeah. And he'll call out a guy, hey, man, Jay, Jay was really doing a good job on this. And then another guy, I said, hey, someone else, who'd you see? And we just start a conversation. Those little moments of affirmation are huge. No doubt. And we, and we know this as coaches, right? But, but for our players to affirm each other um, is, is a big deal. And it's a lost art in coaching. I really believe it's getting further and further away where we're just trying to dictate and to run everything because we do. We have a limited amount of time. We got things we got to get done. We got a big game on Friday, whatever it is. But, man, those moments at the end of practice where you can just say, hey, what was good today, guys? Or, hey, what was bad? Let them talk. Listen. Man, the more they feel like it's theirs and they're owning it and they're together and they're building each other up, the better off you know all of our teams are going to be in the long run. Coach, if you don't mind, I'd love to share an uh, activity that we do that is yeah. along those lines. And I got it from TJ Rosine, who, in my opinion, he's one of the best culture coaches, coaches out there at Emmanuel. And it's an IUE talk. And and the only problem with the IUE talk is you do have to have a lot of time to get it done. I would say probably about 15 minutes or so. If you got 10 to 12 guys, I love your, the almost like the abbreviated version is just, Hey, what's something you saw in somebody else today? Like you can do that, you know, in a couple minutes. And that's really, I'm going to steal that, borrow that. Cause that's really good. But the, you, you take your players standing in a circle, sitting in a circle, whatever, but they start with their eye. What's something that they felt like they've been improving in? Because I've mm. I've noticed too, like my stepson is a great example. He doesn't think that he does a lot of things very well. Like some players, uh, we always think of those guys that that are almost on the arrogant side or the cocky side. But those are, to me, the few. Most players, there's a lot of insecurities about what they yeah. can actually do well. They don't even know at times. And maybe coaches don't highlight those things a lot, so they're left wondering. But they do at the eye, like what what am I doing? What am I? Where do I feel improvement? And then they go to the you. They pick somebody in the room, like man, today I saw it. You were really getting after it defensively, and I can see that yeah. you're growing in that area. And you can just see the other person, like that may build. They don't even realize that you know, you know the compliments that you get randomly from people about things that you didn't even notice or know about yourself. Those last and they stick. And then the final one is the we, fellas, together, we're really improving in our communication. Our enthusiasm is getting to another level. Coach, I I don't care where we are within our season or practice. We might have just had the worst game of our lives. We do an IUE, and we feel great about ourselves and about each other. And then what I do is I sit there as a coach, and I just kind of make a note of the U's. And who hasn't got hit yet? Like, because sometimes some mm. guys will get left out, and I make sure I pick them up at the end. But those are you talk about doing things that cost no money. It's just our time. I will give up some defensive shell drill time yeah. any day. <laughs> I'll give up anything. <laughs> I'll give up any any part of practice for for that amount of time because it's going to translate possibly to wins and losses, but to looking back to your season and looking at each other in the eyes and going, man, that's brotherhood right there. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I think anything we can do as coaches to um, it's buy-in from them. It's uh, information from them. Um, and and it gives you the pulse of what's going on in your program when you listen. You know, we can't always get the pulse by just evaluating and, and watching, but Man, you really get the pulse from listening how they're perceiving everything, in my opinion. And so, Good. you know, that's where. Man, go to number two, because we just, uh, that was off of number one. That was good, right? Yeah, no, that was fun. But no, I think, uh, 
Yeah, you know, and the second thing we talk about beyond our culture is we talk about the word commitment a lot. Um, it's culture and it's commitment for us. That's the second pillar for us in our program. And it's the commitment to what it takes uh, to, to be on the court. And that, and that is the classroom for us. Um, and, you know, I mean, man, we say that. I mean, look, as basketball coaches, I know, man, we're all about the ball. We're all, I get it. I get it. But, but man, you know, from where I sit as a, as a college coach now, I was a junior college coach and was a high school coach. But from where I sit in my seat now, their degree is their moneymaker one day. You know, every kid I've ever recruited told me they wanted to go to the NBA. And I've only had one kid make it. You, you know, Julius yeah. is the only kid that, that's ever made it to the NBA that I've coached. And but they've all told me they want to go play in the NBA, but none of them are. But what are they doing? Well, they're lawyers, they're doctors, they're police officers. There's something, you know, in this world. And that all comes from their degree that they're getting at our university. Right. And so we talk a lot about commitment to the classroom here, uh, commitment to each other, commitment to the work ethic that it takes to achieve what we want to do. And I define commitment just like this. And then we don't have to talk about it long because we all love this word anyway. But commitment really has nothing to do with your feelings or your emotions. But it has everything to do with you doing what you said you're going to do to the person or the people that you said it to. And, and we talk about when we walk on that practice court, no matter what's going on in our lives, no matter no matter if something really bad's happened, girlfriend broke up with us, whatever it is, that when we walk on that court for that for those two hours, that it is our commitment to each other that we're going to give our best to each other because we have goals in place that we're trying to achieve. And it's a commitment that we make to each other to do that. And we just, we really live by that. I don't allow excuses in practice. We never blame another player for something we do wrong in practice. When we write on the board, no excuses. And we don't give, we don't blame referees. My guys will come back to the huddle, the ref. No, we don't do that. They shut it down. <laughs> they, they know we're not about that. Yeah. If a referee steals a game from us, then we weren't good enough in, you know, to win the game in the first place. And you know that, yep. you, you know, and we, but we have to, you know, these kids are being brought up in a culture where it's got to be someone else's fault they lost. It's got to be the coach's fault. It's got to be their teammates' fault. It's got to be the ref's fault. It's got to be the parents' fault. It's got to be somebody's fault, right? Yeah. And and so, you know, we just live with a mindset of we're preparing these kids for life, right? And if they can learn the true meaning of commitment and, and what it means to be for each other and not make excuses for their performance or lack of performance or whatever, that they are going to be able to keep a job in the future. Yeah. You know, because the, the big part of this is that, man, if you don't get it done in your job and your boss comes in and goes, hey, man, why didn't you meet your quota uh, this month? And you go, well, so and so's fault. You know, the, the guy that works next to me, it's his fault. Or, man, you, you know, I don't have the same opportunity as this guy or what you start making excuses. You're going to get fired. That's right. They're just going to fire you and go hire someone else. that can do your job better. Yeah. And so what are we teaching our kids now? You, you know, and so we live by that pillar of commitment and, and that no excuse mentality. And then, yeah, I go got ahead. something to, to ask, though, because what I hear a lot at, at at faith, especially, is, well, what about grace? We made a mistake. Right. We did. What about grace? I feel like that word is thrown around so much when you have a player not and may they, they might not use that word grace. And because a lot of people, right. I think you they use it incorrectly, but what when they come around with that idea of you know when you have the standard of commitment and no excuses but they come back at you wanting more understanding on your part or to give them a sure. break how do you handle give that? them a chance give yeah. give, just give me give another chance. chance yeah yeah like yeah, i mean i mean is... it, it, you know we have the we have a policy where they have their hair can't be down at their eyes they can't be down at their neck and and then and we'll enforce it and immediately that we get a parent email and not me, but our school get a parent email saying, well, I thought we were about grace here. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's not what that is. Yeah, but go ahead. Right. No, I, you know, what I tell my guys every year is that, you know, um, we don't give chances to people in games here and uh, we just don't do it. I mean, you know, um, and the way I explain it to them is you get a chance every day in practice. Yeah. You get a chance every day in practice. Your grace is in practice to screw up that drill or to not make the shot 
or to not get the rebound or to not block out, whatever it was. You get a chance every day to prove to me that that, that you're going to get that done. And then if you can prove to me with the chance I've given you in practice every day, and this is what I tell their parents too, right? Um, Then guess what? That builds trust with me. And when it comes time uh, for game time, and, I, and you have proven yourself because of the chance I've given you in practice that you're going to do what we're asking you to do with the commitment that it takes. And you're not going to make excuses or blame another teammate or have about bad body, body language after it happens or whatever it is the case may be. I said, then you may have that opportunity in the game, but you earn that opportunity in the game from the chances that are given to you every day in practice. And we talk a lot about that here because we believe in a culture of competition, obviously. but at this level, I try to tell them, hey, look, we don't give chances in games. We yeah. give chances every day in practice. And um, it's a perspective thing, right? And if they can embrace practice, because some players like practice more than others, right? Some guys are really good in practice, not so good in the games. And so you got to figure all that out. And every kid's different. Um, and that's why, you know, we have practice you know, way more than we have games is to figure all that stuff out. And so we talk a lot about that. And so when they come to me and they're like, coach, but, you know, could you give me another chance? Can you do that? And I'm like, well, you know, I really have given you that opportunity every day in practice. I'm not seeing you, you know, do what you need to do with that chance every day in practice. So I'm going to keep giving you chances in practice. But, but you know, this other guy, we're going to give him the opportunity in the game this week or tonight or whatever. And I think so many coaches have heard that statement, like been in that conversation right there. I mean, multiple times throughout the year, but I think a big nugget that you said is you start the year off by letting them know what those expectations are about. Yeah. We're not experimenting in games, right? You know, we're, we're not, we're not, I love what you said. You're going to get grace in practice like that's that. Right. That's I'm going to borrow that too, because <laughs> Uh, because, well, you know, at our at my parent meeting ben, or every year, the more that we can frame the way that we're going to sub, the way we handle playing time, it's not an exact science, it's not always going to be this the same, but the more that we can get them ex- to expect or, or understand the why behind what we're doing, they won't fully get there, mm-hmm. but maybe bring them along a little bit. And I think nuggets like that, or even for our players before we start out, may help their moments where they're really wondering why or they're frustrated. They can always go back to the way you first started the season. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast, share it with your fellow coaches, and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.